Okay, Mark Gaffney, we're live. We're talking about hate sites on the web. Do you have any opinions on hate sites on the web? <laughs> well, I think, I think the opinion that I, I hope we both share is that we're opposed to hate sites on the web, whether that's, you know, uh, we're opposed to hatred. <laughs> I think let's, let's start there. I think, you know, hatred is a, or, or malice, you know, and its other form is, is obviously an age-old phenomenon in the world. You know, what we're talking about particularly, though, is the kind of collusion between what we might call the dark side of the web, you know, and, and hatred. So, for example, you know, if, you know, um, 25 years ago, you know, a skinhead or neo-Nazi in America, you know, couldn't, you know, talk to, you know, 500,000 people or even 3,000 people, you know, today... Right, you know, the, the again, the web has many gorgeous and evolved expressions, and, and many things that are more enormously important, which is a different dialogue. But in this particular thing we're talking about, you know, that neo-Nazi or that you know, you know, sexual McCarthyist or that McCarthyist, you know, that person who's kind of, you know, can really use the web to to express their ideas. Number one, but more than to express their ideas, but actually to do damage, you know, to attack, uh, you know, to libel, you know, in ways that are are, are almost impossible, you know, to respond to. You know, um, I'm just give you an example. You know, let's say that a uh, a person is attacked on the web. Let's say Obama. So whatever our opinion about this particular election is, we'll we'll leave out of this discussion. Um, I think we actually might agree on it. But in any case, you know, let's let's take Senator Obama. So whether one you know favors or opposes him, you know, many things have been said about him. You know, by you know, not by the responsible Republican Party, but by kind of fringes of the Republican Party, just like there's fringes of the Democratic Party, which are highly responsible and highly wrong, you know, and which are clear, you know, vicious, you know, smears. So the Obama campaign had to make a decision. Well, do you respond or do you not respond? So, you know, someone who was involved with the campaign said to me, they, they sat down and had a normal discussion. Well, why don't we just, you know, hire a lawyer and sue the people, you know, that are saying these false things. And, of course, the response was, anyone who's looked up the law knows, you can almost never do that for a simple reason. But if you're a private person, right, and you sue someone, in order to kind of win the suit, you need merely to prove that the person told an untruth, the person lied. If you're a public person, the law changes because we want to protect free speech in America, and you have to prove not only that the person lied, but you have to prove malice. Malice means the person intentionally lied. So all the person has to do in order to, you know, evade being prosecuted is said, you know, I heard rumors, you know, so well, I heard rumors, I, I thought they were true, you know, which is, of course, you know, the, the mask of malice. So it's actually very, very difficult for any public person, you know, to avoid that kind of, you know, vicious slander, you know, and, and people say, well, if it wasn't true, why wouldn't you just sue them? Well, the answer is it's very difficult. And so what that does is, and Dennis Prager's made this point, you know, a number of times, so I want to say it, you know, in his name, because, you know, anyone who says something in the name of the person who said it brings redemption to the world, as the Talmud says, you know, what that does is it prevents some of our best people from entering public service, right? You know, in other words, you know, Dennis has pointed out, you know, almost anyone who's a complex and interesting person has something in their life that can be distorted, right? And so, you know, if we want, you know, people who are complex, right, but who are actually, you know, powerful, good leaders in the best sense of the word, with strong moral passion, strong moral courage, you know, we have to have some sort of protection, you know, of public figures, whether that's in the realm of spirit or the realm of public service or politics. So in that sense, not only are hate sites on the web, you know, a classical expression of hate, but they actually potentially, you know, do an enormous amount of damage. And, and one of the most important responses is, is, is to, really to begin to educate the, repub the public to be discerning readers. You know, the notion that because I read something, it's true, but it's, of course, an absurd notion. But we kind of have that kind of strange belief in the written word. So that's at least, a, at least something to open our conversation. And, and what do you say, uh, Mr. Ford, about hate sites on the web? Uh, I can have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, say take, take the beginning. <laughs> Somehow I thought you did. Yeah, stop me if I go on too long. Uh, okay, but, no, please. Uh, first of all, I, I don't have a problem with any emotion uh, being the tenor of a particular website. So if, if a site is 
primarily characterized by the emotion of hatred that no more bothers me than if a website is primarily characterized by the emotion of love. Um, to me, it's or, or determined by how the hatred is expressed and by whom and against whom. So I am not uh, opposed to hate sites any more than I'm opposed to love sites. So, so, um, so I, just have to, I, can't, I can't let the go just asking a question. Right, so in other words, to you, it doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, Rabbi Soloveitchik's Torah or a neo-Nazi site? I mean, is that what, is that, I mean, I just... Well, I said what matters to me is not the emotional tenor of a site, you know, whether it's hatred or love, but who is hating and on, who is being hated and how is it done? So that that uh, that a piece of writing or a piece of art or uh, an internet website um, has a, a emotion that, that primarily connotes hate. Um, I need to know that doesn't bother me in and of itself. I need to know who is doing the hating, who is being hated on, and how is the hatred being expressed. Right. So uh, so 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 let, let, let me let me let me ask the question differently. Okay. Yeah. Right. In other words, you know, and this is precisely where we run into. Levy, I think the problem of McCarthyism, there, there, there's, a, there's a question mark here, which will come in about, you know, 30 seconds. Um, watch your watch, right, which is, I mean, what McCarthyism did, in other words, w we clearly agree that blind hatred, right, you know, is, is, is a bad thing, right, to major an understatement. What you're saying is, well, hatred per se, it's an important point you're making, right, which the psalmist makes, right, you know, that, that hatred sometimes has a place, right, so hatred per se, we're not going to invalidate from the school of emotions, agreed. However, right, you know, what McCarthyism does is hiding behind an ostensibly good cause. For example, the fear of communism, which is a legitimate fear, communism being, you know, the greatest evil perhaps in history, right? And, you know, why don't good people hate communism is a fair question, right? So, in other words, you know, hating something that does great evil is a legitimate, you know, response. You know, again, the response of the psalmist. And however, to use that, Right, to use that, you know, to use that fear in order to do, you know, causeless hatred, what the Talmud calls causeless hatred, what the Talmud calls is, you know, frivolous hatred, using, playing into that fear in order to accomplish, you know, petty, political, nefarious, you know, vicious ends, you know, violates everything that, you know, Judaic ethics are based on. So, so I agree, I think your distinction is an important one. We're not dismissing hatred per se, Right? However, right, the utilization of a good cause, right, what, what, again, what your colleague Prager called idolatry, right? you take a good cause, you take it out of context, and you use it in order to do the most vicious things, right? that's actually what a hate site does. Right? A hate site, you know, whether it's a McCarthyite site, a sexual McCarthyite site, right, or a, you know, a neo-Nazi site, and paradoxically, you know, those sites are often linked to each other, Right? We know that you know, there's a number of sexual McCarthyite sites that I'm aware of that are heavily linked to neo-Nazi sites, right? but it's not by accident. I mean, it's karmically not by accident, you know, because ignoring fact, ignoring empirical verifiability. Right? And I'll say it from a very personal place, Levy. You know, I, I think when you were with me in Tori, I mentioned to you that I had seen a particular hate site, which has 98% you know, things about me are blatantly untrue. You know, among them, I had seen on that day, you know, Gosney's attracted to prepubescent boys. I mean, first I was upset because it's really barnyard animals, you know what I mean? So I couldn't understand why they were talking about prepubescent boys, right? But, you know, jokes aside, and that's a vicious, horrible, sick thing to do, right? Which has no empirical basis, obviously, right? And to even say so is kind of, you know, is kind of loathing. And so that's what I call a hate set. A hate set ignores empirical reality, taps into, right, a, a good cause, fear of communism, fear of sexual abuse, right, um, et cetera, you know, and then distorts it, you know, in, in a very, very horrendous way. So I accept your distinction in terms of hate, but would just kind of add on that qualification to respond. Have you ever seen or heard of the website, the Awareness Center? The Awareness Center. Um, yes, I have, as a matter of fact. I actually have. Um, from everything that you know of that website, would you call it a hate website? Um, the parts of it that I know of the website, I absolutely yeah. would, right? And I don't, I'm not familiar with the entire thing. I know, you know, I know where I know where I'm attacked on that site, um, um, you know, and uh, so obviously I've heard of the site. You know, I know where Harold Bloom is attacked on the site. 
I know where the chief rabbi